Okay, let's try that. What com upcoming servants am I? A lot of people are hyping on Archetype Earth. Ah, well, you got me there, because that's exactly who I'm saving up for right now. She is my number one target. I'll... I'm so definitely getting her NP1. I have enough pulls. I have more than 900 pulls saved, or more than 300 pulls saved up, just so that I can get her. How about yourself? But besides her, I guess this year we've got what? Uh, Proto Merlin? Is it Summer? Is Summer Scotty this year as well? Like both of them, I'd be very, very happy about getting. So this turn, there aren't that many good options. Now, Tower Tota is AoE servant, so we need to get that Scotty NP up and running. We do have non Scotty NP options for defense, but let's start by using the Brave Chain from Scotty. <laughs> and then go from there. Ibuki Summer? Oh, yeah, I've heard a lot about her, right? She's, uh, what? Arts Berserker? But uh, I'll say I'm not a big fan of Ibuki in general. I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, right does character designs for the most part. So, not my thing personally. But hey, if you like her, yeah, best best of luck. But yeah, for me, it's all about Arcade because the reason I'm a Tight Moon fan at all is that I I'm a big Tsukime fan. Tsukime was the first type moon work that I ever read, watched, anything like that. And with um, with Arquake coming in, she is the first actual Tsukime character. And of course, she's not the first... Actually, no, we had Shion, right? We had Shion in, in the game, but Shion's not a servant. Not a playable one anyway. Hmm, okay, I'm worried about Scotty, actually. So this does what again? Target focus, increase the amount of NP gain when damaged. That's what we'll do. We want to heal her. And we're not really counting on Percival for damage, so this turn we'll do this. To try to get his NP charge as high as possible. I'm pretty sure Arts Buster Buster makes more NP than Buster Buster Arts, even though Buster Buster Arts does make decent amount because Arts at the end of the chain gives a lot of NP. But by putting Arts at the beginning, you get the extra NP charge on your extra card, and the extra card is a big deal. It's a very big deal. So on this, her overcharge. To evade one time three turns, damage cut three turns, increase attack five turns. What's the overcharge effect? Damage cut. Ooh, that's really good. But extra attack sounds really good too. Well, either way, I'm gonna use that. Yeah, let's use Skahawk's NP. <laughs> when are we gonna get our rainbow chains? Or what are they called again? Mighty chains? Do you think, like, we're getting more Divine Spirit Servants? I think Archetype Earth is a supreme being. Yeah, I don't exactly know the full lore on that, but I do know that Arquaid, i.e. Archetype Earth, is supposed to be the being that represents Earth to some extent, hence Archetype Earth. But I don't know the exact details, I'll fully admit. And she's supposed to be, in lore, the single strongest person, thing, on Earth. But only under Moonlight or something. Because she is the Moon Princess. Tsuki Hime literally means Moon Princess. Tsuki, Moon, Hime, Princess. So that hentai game had the main protagonist being Arquaid, who is the Moon Princess. They didn't really reference it that much, though. Okay, we need to use Scotty's NP, but besides that, what do we want to do? I really, really wished we had an arts chain or something with Scotty. Hmm. 
Yeah, there's nothing. Unfortunately, no big, uh, no good options here. The full Monarchy is so powerful she has no lines or points. Oh, right, I vaguely remember that. Yeah, she has no lines so that she, even Shiki can't kill him, kill her. Yeah, she's essentially invincible. But I wonder how sh they're gonna integrate her into the story. I actually really have no idea. So I won't read the story, but I'll probably read a summary or something somewhere. Okay. Get Scotty's NP up soon. I will. I'd love to use Percival's NP. Could use him to protect folks this turn. With the damage cut, that actually might be a good option. Because I'm worried that he's going to get killed if he gets targeted. If he gets focus targeted. <laughs> he's basically the protector of Earth. Okay, so that is what that means. Some archetype Earth, she's the protector of Earth. What, from cosmic dangers or something? Um, yeah, there's some... Some bit of backstory and all that, right? Her, is it Brunstead Castle? I don't even know what that is called precisely. Where she is. Now I could get Scotty's NP up, or I could try to get Skahawk's NP up. Because we have options to protect against his NP without Scotty's NP. Yeah. And we're gonna want that heal. Oh, the arts, the art sealed. All right. Well, fuck it. Let's try using it then. Because I want to use Percival's NP for the heal from foreign gods. Okay. Because I guess to be fair, the Type Moon universe has plenty of extra extraterrestrial beings that are threats foreigners and I guess extra dimensional beings and such too okay so he was able to survive but I mean with the taunt again I think he has a good shot at dying soon uh, hmm stun him, but do we want to save that? I suspect Percival's gonna die this turn, but I'm kind of hoping he won't. I mean, obviously I'm hoping he won't. What servants do Do we think we're getting for the 10th anniversary? Damn, are we already on the 10th anniversary in JFK? Oh, I guess it, it must have started in 2014, huh? Ooh, damn it, that's bad. But we're getting Solomon. Yeah, I'd be skeptical of that. I actually don't have no idea where the story is right now in JP, because I don't follow JP. But for the anniversary servant, well, we still have, what, like three, four months away. Three or four months before that's coming, so... Yeah, who knows? I, I honestly don't know who that would be. But... We all, like, every Anniversary Servant at least is, we know it's going to be a good one, right? We have defensive options, we also have the stun. I think we're going to use the stun. Let's do that. Imagine if Barquaid hasn't been corrupted by Roa like she is in Tsukime or Tate. That oh, yeah, that's true, right? And that probably also helps explain why she's so damn powerful. Because she. Yeah. She has, what, like 100% MP charge, right? 
But I, you know, for anniversary in JP, I obviously just want some waifu. I don't know who that would be. We've always had good waifus in Bo for anniversaries. So here's what we'll do. So we don't have healed, but the good news is Skahawk is very powerful. So she can deal lots of damage very quickly. And that's what we're going to have to focus on. To kill him quickly. Going to be Olga. Ah, oh, that one I think is highly unlikely too. But man, imagine Olga. I don't understand how she ended up being such a po popular character given that she has five minutes of screen time at the very beginning of the game. And then she's dead. I guess people feel sorry for her. I certainly do. But it's still like the impact she had on the story. I don't. I don't think it's all that much. And again, she was barely in the story before she died. Spoilers for the first five minutes of of um, F Go story. Okay, normally I'd start with the arts, but I think what we want to do is end with the arts for most time. Not that just possessed. Is that how, what happened? I thought she got sucked into some abyss, and I mean, uh, to be fair, we didn't see her explicitly die, but I thought it was pretty implicit when she fell in. She's basically dead. Nothing is left of her soul. That's what happened. All right. Yeah. I mean, sure. I guess that makes sense. Okay, so we're gonna take a risk here. <clears throat> we're gonna take a risk by using Scotty's NP and trying to get her NP recharged in time for Tota's NP. I think we can do it. Body still exists. Olga is the foreign god at the end of Olympus. Oh, so they do bring her. I skipped too much? I think I skipped too little actually. The fact that I even know who Olga is means that I skipped not enough. Right, because that means I didn't skip the first five minutes of F Go, and I mean, five minutes is probably more time than this story deserves. Okay, that's bad. He targeted Scotty a bunch, and now she is almost dead. Hmm. I might not have thought things through properly here. But as long as Skahak is alive... We have some shot. Yeah, we have no, sh really no shot at getting Sca Scotty's NP up. So let's give up on that. But this turn, we're gonna do this. Wow, I wonder if when FGO started, they thought they'd still be doing it 10 years later. Just the amount of money that they've kept making has been, sure, just yeah, amazing and highly motivating for all of that. Okay, so as much of a waste as it is to use Scotty's or Skahawk's NP, I'm gonna have to do it in order to protect Sc Scotty. The only issue is, do I really even want to protect Scotty at this point? I might not. I might be better off just letting her die. And and also letting Mosh die and just powering through with Skahawk. So let's actually try that. We're gonna power through this with Skahawk. By doing this. She'll survive this turn. Yeah, Scotty's definitely dying. Mosh has a shot, but I think she's dying. And then Scotty's gonna survive. Or Skahawk's gonna survive. Survive. Hitman started a single small light novel company. It's probably worth more than one billion. I'll bet they're easily worth. Well, actually, maybe not. I don't know how much money FGO made, but certainly FGO used to be the biggest gacha game after Gen before Genshin came around. But it's probably in that level. But yeah, I mean, they started out just 25 years ago, less than 25 years ago, making, well, hentai games, uh, Tsukime and Fate Stay Night. And I, Fate Stay Night really was the one that brought them so much success, unfortunately, because they had so much better works than Fate Stay Night, like Tsukime and Kara no Kyokai. 
which I mean they all had some at some level of success, which I appreciate. I'm really, really glad that Kara no Kyokai did get made into a set of movies. And it's amazing too that when I was reading Kara no Kyokai before the movies were ever a thing, I was thinking exactly, Maya Sakamoto should be the voice actress for Ryogi Shiki, and Mamiko Noto, who's this lady, should be the voice actress for Asagami Fujino. And both of those ended up happening. So, great casting decisions. And, like, good anime. Yeah, I, I really do like those movies. Okay, okay. Alright, nothing special. I think... It's probably nothing special. But, that's generally for Type Moon. But Tsukime, I think probably I would agree actually. Tsukime is my favorite among all the Type Moon works. And it probably, you know, I'm biased because it was my first Type Moon work. But still, I... I feel like it just does such a great job with all five heroines and the horror elements. Good. It, it actually makes Nasu's stilted writing work because Nasu, uh, parts of it, your character is going insane, literally insane. So if you're going insane, whatever monologue is going on through your head is not going to be very sensible. So. Like, they do a good job on that. And there's a reason why this chair is an eyesore has became the meme that it was. It's a really good <laughs> good scene. I grew up on Type Moon, but on Alice Soft, Rance and Sash. So Alice Soft, I've heard the name. Rance, I know that one. I I've never actually played a Rance game. I know those games are known for really, really deep um penetration, first of all, but also combat system. Like it's a strategy RPG. I think, where you conquer Japan and rape women that you conquer, something like that. But Nasu writes crazy so well, yeah, I mean, one might say that's one of the few things he writes so well. <laughs> but I'll give him that, I'll absolutely give him that, completely. Uh, I could use Skahawk's Ska Ska NP, but I feel like I want to save her NP for next turn to stun. But again, we have Jean's stun that we can use. So fuck it, let's go hard this turn with the damage. And we'll try to get her NP charge back. Alisoft though, I don't... Like, again, I've heard the name, but what kind of... What game did they make? Alright, almost a mil. Very good. We need two more of those though. Losing out on the max HP buff. Yes. Yeah. So I think that'll get Jean's NP up. It better. There we go. And now we're protected this turn. Unfortunately, the max HP buff is losing out on that so much is hurting. But what can we do? And. I really want to prioritize getting Skahawk's MP charge to full right now. Just gotta get that up. And again, two more NPs from her would do it, but one NP plus some extra hits, a lot of extra hits, could do it. It's too bad Skahawk's MP charge is so bad. But I guess when they built her, you know, they needed to make her weak in some area, right? Because when she came out, she was a monster. She still is. To a large extent, but yeah, she's just the Im damage uh, she can output is just absolutely crazy. Uh, maybe I should have done Buster Arts, the Buster Buster Arts for the MP charge, but I kind of wanted to go straight damage. Can't imagine somebody asking us on. Games we grew up with light novels were the real shit. <laughs> light novels. I never read too many light novels. Triple Scotty helps with that. What do you mean Triple Scotty? Uh yeah. I I remember back in the day. Like Kara no Kyoka, I, I, of course I read, but the um, I remember when Melancholy of Parui Suzumiya came out. The, it was based on a light novel. And I hadn't really heard about light novels at that point. Actually, maybe I did, because before 
Melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya, there was also anime that I'd heard about and watched, uh, Shakugan no Shana, which is, I think the best uh, localization name of that is Fire-Eyed Shana. I've heard it called also Shana the Girl with Fla Flame in Her Eyes, which I kind of like the girl with flame in her eyes, but I'll admit it's a little awkward. Whereas Fire-Eyed Shana, you know, gets the point across. And it's shorter. But that's a light novel and also Familiar of Zero. That was based on a light novel, but I hadn't really read them. But I decided to read Melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya because I heard it had won some awards and shit or something. So I thought, oh, it's probably pretty good. And it was really good. It's actually a really, really good novel. So I can't recommend that enough. And it's certainly better than any of the Karen no Kyokai novels, even though, again, I like Karen no Kyokai. It's just, they're just not very well written. Okay, time to use Ku's NP. Yeah. Double Summer Scotty and regular Scotty? Oh, uh, I guess that would, yeah, give her a ton of NP gain, huh? Yeah, all the extra quick. Because, what, you're getting 50%, 50%, 50%, so you're making the quick NP charge by two and a half times the normal. That's a ton. Man, I've been getting lucky with Skahawk not getting targeted. It's been pretty dangerous. Okay, we can NP with her. This is gonna be a lot of damage. I don't know if her NP by itself is gonna do one, uh, one mil, but it actually should come pretty close, I think. Oh uh, no. Okay, I was completely off. What? I thought with her own quick buff that would be it, but maybe without Scotty's? Huh. Maybe she needed some other buffs. Okay, well, we need at least one more NP then. Maybe two. We weren't as close as I thought we were. Okay, we also do need to get Jean's NP up, huh? But we have ways to protect. We absolutely do. Okay, we're gonna do this. This isn't the best combination for NP charge, but it'll do some big damage, and we don't really care about charging NP anyway, because we couldn't get the NP charge this turn regardless. But what we can do now is use the dodges to protect. Oof. Okay, let's go for this. Maybe we can get some crits next turn from Skahawk. That could help end it. But we still have both guts for the servants who have the event CE, so we're at a pretty good place on that. But we also know that things can go down real quickly in this game. Things can go to shit very quickly if you mess up, so... Let's not get like a daisical here. Man, losing that is a bit annoying. Do I wanna You know I keep saying they should add something to this. If they added a debuff cleanse, actually that would also work because Ku has a debuff cleanse on his third skill and Ku and Skahawk are they know each other. Skahawk was Ku's teacher. So it would make sense for Skahawk to also have something like a heal, or specifically debuff cleanse. But she doesn't have anything like that. Fuck it, let's use it. I don't think I'll be needing the debuff cleanse for anything really. And with the 100% crit, it's just too juicy not to take. And it's gonna give a good chunk of NP charge too. Ah, uh, yeah, that's what I was afraid of. Okay, lucky. Skahawk did not get killed, but she's gonna die very soon. Oh, debuff cleanse. Okay, or at least losing that on the quick thing. Okay, we need to use her NP right now. We have no way to protect her. Yeah. This is going to reduce his defense, I forgot about that. This doesn't matter. 
And for doing the most damage, that's gonna be this. Or, oh no, the arts, because I forgot. Skahawk doesn't have her quick buff right now. Without a buff on the quick card, it's always gonna do less damage than the arts card. So, so, okay, we're getting there. Who might be able to finish things off? Who might be able to finish things off? We can consider Skarhach lost at this point. Yeah. Let's just do as much damage with her as possible, but yeah, we have a very good chance that she's gonna die this turn. Very, very good chance. I don't know the exact odds. I mean, the math isn't hard, I just don't feel like doing it in my head right now. Okay, there it is. Actually, it would be 2 to the 3rd over 3 to the 3rd, so it would be 8 27th. So 19 out of 27 chance, more than 2 thirds chance that she was going to die that turn. Which, well, we saw that, but now it's 100% chance. Now we know. Okay, this should... Yeah, I, who's going to end it? Who's going to be able to end it? Not If not this turn, next turn. So yeah, we couldn't solo it again. It, it's probably doable with the event CE ML bead, but again, I don't have the ML, event CE ML bead right now, and I don't plan on ML being it anytime soon. So we'll see. I might come back and try soloing it just to do it again. But then again, I've already done it once before, so I might not. I don't have the highest motivation to do it again. Alright, Ku, cool. how about you, su you succeed where your mentor didn't. Right. He didn't even need the NP. Excellent. That took far longer than I wanted it to take. I was hoping to just get it done and over with with the... Uh, with my... Skahawk solo, but hey. Can't always get what you want, but if you try sometimes, you get what you need, right? In any case, I don't know that I'm going to be doing all of these challenge quests. Certainly not tonight, and even in the long run, just because there's so many challenge quests. So many. They put way too many. If they made this a three-week or, yeah, three-week event, then this amount of challenge quests I think is okay, but two weeks... Man, just how they expect it. I mean, I guess if you're not streaming or recording it like me, it's you can just kind of approach them here and there on your free time. But there's again just so many. I did it in KR. I don't. I didn't finish every single challenge quest in KR. I think I finished most of them, but not every single one. 